Cynthia Stanford had a rare condition called Raynaud's disease. Her fingers turned numb and white when exposed to cold. Jobs in the kitchen were a problem, washing up or peeling carrots, peeling potatoes. My fingers used to go into total whiteout and be unusable. By coincidence, her husband, Professor John Stanford, was testing a new vaccine for leprosy. It contained a bacteria he'd isolated in a mud puddle in Uganda. It was called M. Vaki. Since we were the ones that were, had developed it, we wanted to try it on ourselves first before we gave it to anybody else. John and I had a dose each, and I realised that my Rhino's disease that I'd had since I was a small girl um, had gone away. And so after that, we lined up all the rest of the family who also had Rhino's disease, but they also had other things. The vaccine appeared to be helpful in dealing with the other diseases that run in the family, including even cancer. My mother had cancer at the same time as her Raynaud's disease, which disappeared, including spinal secondaries. She had her Mbaki injection, and then uh, a month or so afterwards, when she went for radiological assessment before having the radiation, um, they said, well, they've disappeared. These results were entirely anecdotal. But the bacterial treatment began to have surprising results elsewhere, too. I asked an Indian doctor who was doing leprosy work if he would look out for any other indications that it seemed to be helpful with. The first one that he noticed, um, which was really quite important, um, was a patient with leprosy and psoriasis. Remarkably, the psoriasis got better. He was so pleased that uh, when we were out there visiting India, he brought us um, a small goat to give us in exchange <laughs> for the good that we'd done him. Stanford's discovery is now being tested in clinical trials. And one of the most promising is for depression. Drugs that are commonly used to treat depression have anti-inflammatory effects. And so one of the ways that they may be improving the health of depressed patients is by suppressing the inflammation, which is exactly what Mycobacterium vacci does. Inflammatory diseases are problems of the immune system. But how could something so complex be controlled by a bacterium from Africa? Humans co-evolved with these bacteria throughout evolution, and so it's thought that uh, until about the last 50 years or so, we would have consumed milligram quantities of these bacteria. So the immune system began to rely on the presence of these things to turn on the police force, if you like, of the immune system. Without microbes, like M. Vaki, the immune system becomes overactive and causes constant inflammation. We spent all this time thinking about our immune system as this machine that repelled microbes, that just zapped them left and right, like one of those fly zappers. And it turns out that the immune system that we thought had evolved to kill microbes is actually controlled by microbes. Our modern lives, however, are isolating us from the very thing we need to stay healthy. Now, of course, we don't consume these bacteria because we have sterilized water and sterilized food. And it's thought that the lack of these bacteria is contributing to an increase in disease specifically diseases that are related to inflammation. The evidence now strongly suggests that the rise in these diseases is a result of our isolation from the microbes we've evolved with. Soon, we may be able to treat immune disorders by putting the bugs back into our bodies. But the potential of bacterial treatments goes even further. Australian scientists are now injecting bacteria into mosquitoes to prevent us from getting sick. Mozzies are annoying at the best of times. They've developed elaborate weapons to get the food they need to survive, our blood. Mosquitoes need blood for protein to make eggs. Only the female mosquito feeds on blood and without it, she really won't uh, uh, develop enough eggs to lie. But these syringes don't only draw blood. 
they often inject us with potentially lethal parasites, causing serious infections, like dengue fever. Dengue is actually caused by four quite different viruses, and, uh, and uh, each of them has quite a different uh, effect in the host. So you literally have to have four, four vaccines uh, rolled into one. But scientists at Monash University have discovered an elegant way to combat the disease. Instead of vaccinating humans, they are vaccinating the mosquitoes. These mosquito eggs are being injected with a powerful bacteria called Wolbachia. Professor Scott O'Neill has spent much of his career studying this intriguing bacteria. I got introduced to it at a very early age and it hooked me and I've been studying it my whole life. And so one of the most amazing things about Wolbachia is just how common it is. If you were to look in a, in a bushland environment like this and look at the insects within it, around 70% of those insects would all carry Wolbachia naturally. And when you think on the planet that there are two to five million different species of insect, that's a huge number that naturally carry Wolbachia. Just as gut bacteria can be good for us, Wolbachia is beneficial to insects, protecting them against invading parasites. By having Wolbachia within the body of the insect, it's acting like a probiotic for the insect, if you like. It, it's making the insect healthier and makes it able to fend off some of these other pathogens like dengue viruses. But there's a catch. Mozzies that spread diseases like dengue don't have Wolbachia. So the challenge was to find a way to infect them. In fact, you know, we spent you know, years and years trying to do that experiment. I uh, had many poor students who failed uh, in that uh, endeavour until finally we were able to succeed about four years ago. These mosquitoes host Wolbachia. They are so precious that volunteers will gladly sacrifice their ankles to feed them. We're rearing uh, thousands, occasionally uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of mosquitoes, and releasing them, not killing them. There have been outbreaks of dengue in Australia's tropical north in recent years. So to test their theory, researchers have been releasing the vaccinated mosquitoes in cans. Once released, Wolbachia spreads quickly. Every week they monitor how many of the wild mosquitoes now have the bacteria. And the results are paying off. The releases that we did in 2011 are close to 100% infected with Wolbachia. Wherever the mosquitoes have been released, dengue has been stopped in its tracks. Following the success in Cairns, new trials have begun all over the world.